Hey, hey, everybody. It is uh, Tuesday, the 11th of April. How's everybody doing? So about a week ago, I started getting messages about the twin flame and I would get the messages. I don't write things down and then I would forget the message. But either way, I put the heart up here that split and I let it sit there now for a week and I'm moving so I've been um, in and out of town so today um, they just said sit down and you got to do this and we'll just let it flow so a lot of people are under the impression that their soulmate and their twin flame is based on the lifetime channel and the movies and that these two people that are madly attracted to each other that are this perfect match in on all levels is their their soulmate their twin flame you'll hear people say soulmate twin flame are very different doesn't matter it's not the point right now the point here is we've had a severing of the the twin from within us we have the left yin the right yang feminine masculine it's been severed it's been severed intentionally for hmm, i want to go a little over 2000 years so you notice that it was very masculine world for a very, very, very long time. And anyone who is is 40 and above is gonna understand the female movement and try to get equal pay between genders and so on. So the to me, this is the messages that they gave me. So it may resonate with some, it may not, whatever, take what you want, toss the rest. Who knows, it could come back to you later and you'd be like, oh, now I know what Sandy was saying. So just think about this. So, you know, the twin flame has nothing to do with genitalia. It has nothing to do with if you have low hanging fruit or your fruit is tucked up tight, okay? So it has no bearing on your genitalia. It has to do with the energy of the feminine and the masculine and how you must have both to procreate anything, anything. You know, when you plant fruit trees, you have to have them balanced between female tree and a male tree. So they just said, don't go there too much. <laughs> so anyway, the, the, the flame within ourselves, within our heart center, our power, our direct connection to the creator source of all that is and that all we are. So this yin and yang, this, this, this heart center has been severed. So we come into a world where we're super competitive and we have to be like the generation before us and even better. And we're taught, sometimes the rougher and tougher, more competitive you are, the more successful you are. And the feminine has been suppressed. Suppressed. Instead of giving it its power due of being part of the the major part of creation so with that being said when that is severed from within us we're always looking outside of us for what we think we're missing so we're looking for that true love right that that true love and we're looking for it in a companion in a companion of some sort. But the key here, what they were saying to me is, 
bringing together and uniting the feminine and masculine within your self brings everything together in a full heart space so that you're so content with learning about the me, myself, and I of, of this, you're less busy looking out there and thinking you're missing something. There's a lot of people that will say the twin flames, they come in and sometimes they could be your biggest nemesis. And they can because you have unfinished business from another lifetime. And sometimes one can come in and you, you, you love them, but you don't like them at all. And then we're under this, this, this premise that, you know, we're stuck in that relationship for the rest of our lives. And that of course was created by man so that, uh, uh, churches and establishments would not suffer from financial losses if people split up. Okay. That's neither here nor there. Don't get caught up in how it all became and labeling and branding it and shifting it around that left brain and trying to make sense of feelings. Because feelings really cannot be explained and followed by words. They're a feeling. So learning to balance that yin and yang part of you isn't really that difficult. For me, um, I just let whatever come up, come up and not labeling it my shadow, not labeling it um, a part of me that I don't like or that I like. It's just blending it and accepting it and forgiving all things because everything is in my perception, right? Creating my reality from what I think I've learned from this lifetime and what society has dictated, what's acceptable and not acceptable in all of your learning and educational, as well as everything else. So if we step back from all of that, and we don't look at ourselves and judge all of the lumps, the dimples, the bumps, the scars, the ripples and the rolls, because that's an exterior part of your anatomy that has nothing to do with blending your heart together. Except when you do, you love every dimple, every roll, every scar, every lump, every bump, meaning lessons, physical, whatever it is, because if you look at it as I'm here to collect data and I'm going to trip and fall and I'm going to sort of pick to this physical body so I may look like my mother, my father, my grandfather, my grandmother, and so on. So the physical body is going to take on what their body sort of look like. And one of them could be not what you really desire. But if you honestly close your eyes and take that exterior physical part out of, out of it and tap into this direct contact with all of creation, and be humble with it and have compassion with it. You may find where you reside is full of love, filled with love. And no matter how somebody looks at you or throws opinion or judgments towards you, if you're like me, you're empathic, 
You can sort of understand exactly what they're saying without them putting it to words because you can read energy, you sense it. Don't ever discard that. Don't ever discard that. Look at that as a freaking awesome gift. And then say, okay, I got this talent called empathic. How do I hone it to make it a skill so that I can go into a room and I kind of know what's happening and then I can adapt myself to what's happening but still stay very strong and true to my complete heart center. And the more that you do that and know that your pure source love and that their judgments, opinions, and whatever is flowing towards you, you do not give consent to it. You don't take it in. You don't own it because they don't have the power to, to take that over and have you begin to feel that way and think that way and have reactions and emotions that way that makes you self-loathe your avatar. Make it a daily kind of thing that you can stay really balanced in your feminine, strong feminine, and your strong masculine. Because remember, a lot of these things have been uh, descripted the way the educational system wants you to see what's feminine, what's non-feminine. Create your own definition of what you think and feel feminine and masculine is and tweak it until you get it where you can feel it and then you feel all together and you're never alone even if you're with the me, myself, and I. You're, you're dancing, you're happy, you feel complete and anything else that comes along is a compliment to who you are. And also, the more you work on this particular as aspect of who you are on a different level than just the physicality or what you've been taught for mentality, put that all together and watch if you don't stand taller. Watch if you're not a graceful feminine masculine combined. And in that strength, you're exuding that which other people could read as confidence, whatever. And so anything that comes along, you can read what's happening, but you're only going to invite in and give consent to what is compatible with you. Because if you don't, we know what happens. You're searching, 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 and then you think you find something, and then they're never what you thought they were. Because honestly, it's within you. It's not within them. And then when you have attracted that kind, and you're like, oh, I really misread this. Ah, okay, lesson learned, lesson learned. I'm still working, still working, still working. Yep, twin flame one down, twin flame two, let's go. But the twin flame is here. It's your balance within your, your heart, within your body, within your mind, within your energetics. You don't need anything outside of you because this whole software program has all the information. And once you realize there's no slit down the middle, and you've got this like broken heart and you're out there looking for the other part of you. It's outside of you. You can only present what you've tapped into. And the deeper you tap, the wider the lens and the more things that come in. So there is no right, wrong. There's no good, bad. It's just data. It's just information. And then you rekey it 
Can you tap in here a little bit more? I said, okay, DNA. Okay, show me some more. I'm a powerful soul, totally blended. My heart is totally blended. My body is totally blended. My energetics are totally blended. I don't need or want anything from out there. I'm just scanning, scanning. I'm just taking information in and whoop, letting it go, dissolving it. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, well, I don't know if I like that. Okay, let that go. Won't go back for that again. Well, that happens in relationships, but until you have a relationship sincerely within thyself, you won't be able to be authentically and sincere in a companion type relationship. So just connect with that a little bit. Let that come into your feeling awareness. And if you need coaching or healing, or you wanna get into more of your authentic self, past life regression is an amazing, amazing tool. It's an amazing tool. I'm here to help. Much light and love to each and every one of you. Please like, subscribe, share, love messages, and uh, see you on the next video.